Okay, here is Illustrator Skills Worksheet 2, uh, Video 2. I'm going to do steps 4 through 9. So step 4 is all about the scissor tool. The scissor tool lets you cut shapes. Um, so we're going to take some of the shapes from step 1 and simply cut them with the scissor tool. Um, so I'm duplicating my circle, my triangle, my rounded rectangle, and my star. And I'm going to zoom in. Now, the first, the, the scissor tool is here underneath the eraser. We go to the scissor. Um, this like, lets you break an open path on a specific point. So for the circle, I'm actually going to use the scissor tool on the points uh, of the circle. So I'm going to use one here on the rightmost point. I'm going to use one here. Uh, excuse me, that was the leftmost point. I'm going to use one here on the rightmost point. And what this has done, this has separated my shape into two shapes. Um, if you just cut a shape once with the scissor tool, um, it will still be a, a mostly closed shape that is that not actually completely closed. But if you click on two sides with the scissor tool, it will actually slice it in half. And then I've just moved those two slices apart. Um, here is the scissor tool for the triangle. I'm going to click once on this lower right point, and then the other one, I'm going to click in the middle of the side of the triangle. So you don't have to use the scissor tool just on points. You can use it uh, anywhere on a shape. Okay. And I have now have this shape and this shape. And pulling it away, you can see I've cut it in half. I didn't line it up absolutely precisely, but I'm not worried about that for this project. I'm just worried about um, demonstrating that I understand how to use the tool. All right, so our rounded rectangle. I want to go to the middle of this side, cut, middle of this side, cut. So that has cut into this shape and that shape, and then I'm going to go to the middle of this side and cut again. And suddenly it looks like a triangle has been punched out of it. But what has happened is I have that shape, that shape, and then the lower half remains as one shape. All right. Um, so I can move these further out. I can move this up. I've replicated this shape. The star, we want to cut on all of our inner points on all five of them. So we want to cut here, 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 and here. And now we have five separate triangles. Okay? We don't want to move them, we just want that hollow star. Now, um, you can start to see how this can be very helpful. To, to draw uh, a lot of different things. If you can start with a very geometric shape, if you know you want very even round curves or uh, precise uh, points or angles, you can then start with a very regular geometric shape and slice it into pieces. All right, um, next up is five five, we're going to use the pen tool. So not everything can be done with basic geometric shapes. Sometimes you need to get in there and just draw it. The pen tool in Illustrator, it's this, it looks like the nib of a fountain pen. Um, the pen tool honestly has a learning curve. It can be a little difficult at first. I think it's sort of a misnomer calling it a pen tool because it doesn't really work like a pen works. 
it's really a connect the dots tool. It's all about connecting points and controlling uh, uh, the curves that connect those points. So number five, we're going to use the pen tool in its most basic form. We're just going to place four dots and connect them. So when you first click, that's the first point of your shape. Click again, it connects the two. Click again, it connects the third one. And now, because there are three points, it has an area to fill. So my, if I go to my uh, outline mode, you can see it's actually an open shape. But in preview, it's filling in as a closed shape because the fill just wants to connect. I go here, my fourth one, and then lastly, bring it on home. Um, so this is a little bit like playing baseball, that we have rounded third base and we're coming home. Now, you'll notice whenever I am just using the pen tool, I just have this little pen nib icon. But once I get near or on top of my first point in the shape, you'll see that there's a little circle next to it. And this means clicking there is going to complete the shape and make it a closed shape. And that's what I want. So now I have a closed shape. I can click off to um, get out of this pen tool so I don't start drawing some more. And now I can just use the direct selection tool to, uh, you know, make my points match the template a little bit more precisely. And that's step five. That's the basic intro to the pen tool. Now, of course, we don't always draw everything with straight lines and hard corners. Step six, believe it or not, this sort of loopy kidney shape, actually it sort of looks like a little bird to me, like, like that's its beak and an eye would be there. Um, so this, this little birdie is actually based on the same four points as step five. Take that same shape, move it over here, and we're going to use what is called the Convert Anchor Point tool. So it looks like this, um, you know, it looks like a, a less than sign that's at an angle. Um, what this does, if you click on a point in a shape, pull out with the Convert Anchor Point tool, this pulls out curve handles. We'll do it again here, and we'll do it one more time down here. Now, curve handles behave in a certain way. Um, they'll have two handles that are, they start out equidistant, so I pulled this one out this far, this one pulls out the same distance in the other direction. If I bring this one down, the other side goes up. If I bring this one up, the other side goes down. They remain tangent to each other, if you remember your high school um, geometry. Uh, they remain tangent to each other on this point. Um, and that's why they behave like that. Now, not every shape can be drawn with these tangent curves. Um, first of all, you can grab one point and pull it in tighter, or you can pull it out further than the other. That's fine. That helps. That helps us get our shapes a little bit more like we want them. Actually, let's do our transparent and our magenta outline track. So, so far I've actually got this pretty close except for right here. So I need to tweak this. Um, so I can bring this up here. No, oh, actually I kind of got it. Wow. So without having to, oops, excuse me, without having to do anything 
with this last point, I kind of got it. Now, um, I'm really good at controlling these. I've been using this for 20 years. I, I draw typefaces for fun. Uh, don't be discouraged if you have a harder time using the pen tool at first. There's absolutely a learning curve. And when I first learned how to use it in, um, in the mid-90s, I was clueless too. I made such horrible messes with it. Um, it just takes some practice. Uh, now, I'm going to pull out curves from here to show you how to make sharp angles. So, there, I've got, I pulled out a curve handle, and this side is great, but I want this side, I want the sharp point here of the bird's beak, right? Um, and if I just go with my direct selection tool, move that, well then this one's out, move this, that one's out of position. It wants to be a soft corner and I want it to be a hard corner. If you go back to your convert anchor point tool, grab that handle, suddenly now if you move one handle with the convert anchor point tool, it decouples it. The two anchor points, the, the two anchor, I'm sorry, excuse me, the two curve handles are no longer tangent to each other. These are tangent, which is great if you want a smooth curve. Um, in fact, you if you want a smooth curve, you really want tangent handles. But something like this, where you want a sharp point, you decouple the two handles from each other with the convert anchor point tool and you can make a sharp corner like that. Alright, so we will remove our stroke, give ourselves a black fill, and that's our step six. Again, don't worry about matching it absolutely exactly, just demonstrate to me that you understand how the tool works. Um, seven, eight, and nine are all based on the stroke palette. So for everything up until now, we've been using a solid fill and either no outline or just a thin white, white roll in this case. For seven, eight, and nine, we're going to have a, uh, a rule of varying size and quality and no fill. Um, so, let's draw this shape. Um, I'm going to show you, so we want, we're basically drawing, it looks like a wide uppercase G, like a very, very wide uppercase G. So the left side, I'm going to draw myself a circle for this left side. Um, maybe not a perfect circle, maybe a little bit more like an oval. That seems like a pretty good match. Move it over. And I'm going to have no fill in my black stroke. I'm going to think back to much earlier in the worksheet to how you can cut apart a geometric shape and use my scissor tool and cut this on the top and cut this on the bottom. If I select this right-hand side, I can move it away, I can just delete it. Okay? Now, there's two things I can do with this. I can, with the pen tool, I can click on that point. Now, this point is active, and I can click over here to make the top of the G. All right? If I click off it, that's... One way, I could start from here and work my way out. I'm going to show you guys another way in case you're not quite thinking that far ahead. So let's say I have drawn this bottom right part of my G. And now I want to connect them. I want to connect here to here. Now, you might think that you could just bring this over 
and they would connect, but they don't. They remain as two separate shapes, even if they're overlapping. All right. So what you can do with the direct selection tool, you can select these two points and do Command J to join them. J for join. Command J connects them. If they are right on top of each other, um, if they're touching each other, it just connects them. If there's a gap between them, it bridges the gap. So now I have a complete shape here. All right. Um, my this is pen tool no fill two point stroke. So I want to go. Uh, if you have it up here, this is great. You can do two points up here. If you don't have it, you're going to want to go to the stroke palette. You need the stroke palette for the next part anyway. It's this one with the three lines of varying thickness. If you don't see it, you can go to Window, Stroke, and you get the Stroke Palette. Um, it may show up for you just like this. It's just simply line weight. We're going to need more. Go to here, go to Show Options. Um, steps 8 and 9 use some of the line width options. So we're going to copy number 7 over to number 8. Number 8 and number 9 are the exact same shapes. Um, with different stroke treatments. All right, so we select this. We want, and you may notice that there's a couple of things, that these corners are sort of cut on a diagonal, right? And that this extends beyond the point. Now, I guarantee you, 7, 8, and 9 use the exact same shape. So how do we get our stroke to go beyond here? Well, maybe making it thicker, right? Making it thicker, these are 8 points, by the way. Doesn't really do the trick. It still stops there. Well, this is due to our cap style. Uh, it defaults to what is called a butt cap. This means that it abuts to the point. Um, we also have a round cap which gives us uh, a circular end, or a semicircular end, and a projecting cap, where it projects whatever the uh, thickness of the line is, that's how much it projects beyond as well. So that's obviously what number eight is. It is the projecting cap. Now let's look at the corner. We default to a miter join, which is a sharp corner. There is a round join, which will be semicircular on the outside, and there is a bevel join, which is uh, sort of a, what they might call a chamfered cut. It's a sort of 45 degree angle. And that's what number eight is. It is the eight point stroke weight projecting cap bevel join. Number nine, same width, eight points, uh, and you may have guessed that this has the round cap and the round join. All right. So you may find uh, in drawing your shapes that sometimes you want a solid filled shape, sometimes you just want a line. Uh, it's fine to draw an illustrator that way. Um, so now we're done with Illustrator Skills Worksheet 2. The very last thing you want to do is go to your uh, layers palette, hide the template, and then this is how you want to save your final AI file. This is what you want to print out, um, and we're done.